To get to the good part in life, you have to go through the dark part. Yes, you have to go through the dark part. Many people never get to their destiny because they won't work through the disappointments that life brings at them. It's going to get good and gooder and gooder and better and better. And let me shock you. You haven't seen anything yet. You haven't even met your best self yet. You haven't. You have to get through this valley. Oh yeah. You have to get through this valley. Yeah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. You can find this in Psalm chapter 23. But the question I want you to ask yourself is. Is a rod and a staff a good thing or a bad thing? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? It depends on whether you're a wolf or a sheep. The truth is. When I belong to God. Everything he does in my life might not feel good. But it is good because he's still good. Our God is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Psalm 23 verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley. This shows that I have to get through this valley so I can make it to the table. You prepare a table. Make it to the table. I'm going to make it to the table. You're going to make it. You have to make it. I was born to make it. Your kids need you to make it. Your spouse needs you to make it. Your church needs you to make it. You have to make it. It's necessary that you make it. You have to get to the good part. You have to locate Israel inside of you Jacob. Sit up Israel. Be a man. Be a woman. Be the one God called. Stand up and do it. You have to make it to the table. But remember that to make it to the table you have to go through the shadow. The bitter truth is. Every good thing has a dark part. James said something I thought we should think about. He said, don't be deceived, brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. Do you see it again? The contrast. Every good thing has a dark part. What concerns me is I see a lot of people who never get to the good part of their marriage, of their gift, their skill. Just like the experience some guitarists shared while learning to play a guitar. They get to a point where their fingers hurt so badly. Their instructors would respond to their agony by saying you have to build up the calluses. Most people quit before they get the callus. If you keep playing long enough, eventually your fingers will be able to withstand the pain. And if you don't play for a little while it doesn't change, you have to start over again. Most people quit before they get there. Whether it's teenagers who want to end their life or let's be honest, not even end their life, but just sabotage themselves because they don't want to sit with the loneliness. You just want to tell them, no, 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 don't give that away. That's too important. No, 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 don't do that. Get to the good part. Yeah, it's going to feel different. Yes, it's going to be confusing. You're not gonna grasp it all at once. This is where people give up on God. They start reading the Bible and they read it like a fortune cookie. The first thing that makes them confused. They say, God is not real. This stuff doesn't work. I don't really believe it. I prayed and it didn't happen. But you didn't get to the good part where you find out that it is not in the answers that God becomes real. It is in wrestling with the questions that you find out there is a kingdom within you. That's the good part. Thank God for all of the good things around me but it's what he does in me. That's the good part. You will never get to that if you keep changing what's around you. You never get to the good part because you won't go through the dark part. Take a pill. Get out of the dark part. Blow up the relationship. Many people never get to intimacy in relationships. I'm going to tell you why. It is because they won't push through the insecurity. To get to real intimacy you have to go through insecurity. I have to be willing to let you see me if we're going to have intimacy as someone said for intimacy. That's scary. I don't want you to see into me, so, we never get to intimacy, because we won't work through the insecurity of saying, yeah, I am flawed. Even in our relationship with God, Jacob spent his whole life pretending to be somebody else but God said no. I want to get to the good part, the true part, the real part. Joseph, don't throw your brothers out. That's how God is going to build a nation. Get to the good part. I know you want to go off and freak out and tell them. That's just your reaction. That's not the reality. The real you knows better. So, James says don't be deceived. Every good gift comes from above. A few things I take from that. First, if it's good it came from God. So, 
If God blesses me through somebody or through something, it came from him hence it's going to be good. We get dependent on people. We think people have to be good to us for God to be good to us. No, they don't. Who got Jesus to the cross? Which disciple? John the one he loved or Judas the one who betrayed him? You see, God can twist the worst event in your life that your enemy planned for evil to the best thing in your life. Get to the good part. The part that feels good isn't always the part that is good. You only know that when you reflect on it. I was thinking, if it's good, it came from God. If it came from God, it's good. What if it didn't? It's going to be good anyway. That's where Romans 8.28 comes in. All things work together for the good. Most people don't even get to the good part of the verse. They just stop in the word good. The good part is what it says next. To those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. When we talk about what God calls good, we have to understand something about God. God doesn't call something good based on how it made you feel while it was happening. God doesn't call something good based on how much you expected it and how much it matched your preference. God calls it good when it serves its purpose. When God made man on the sixth day, he said it's very good. It's really good. It's in my image. It's according to my likeness. It's good. Joseph said, am I in the place of God? No, you're not in the place of God. But he had the same thought process as God. He knew the darkness doesn't have to go away for the light to be effective. So, when they ask how are you doing, and you say, I'm good, you're not lying. You're just focusing. Sometimes, before you can get to the good part in your life, you have to get to the good part in your mind. Are you waiting for it to get good in your life and God is waiting for you to get good in your mind? For everybody who's struggling with comparison and envy, what are you good at? The darkness doesn't want you to see that. You only see without form and void. God said, let there be light. I'm just asking God over our congregation, shine the light on the good part this week. Turn your flashlight on your phone right now and start shining it around. When the people who are sitting in your apartment start asking you what in the world are you doing, say I'm looking for the good part. I need some light. I need the word of God. I need worship. I need the presence of God. That is why your consumption becomes important. Your social media, your 24-7 news cycle, people will say, I have to be informed. It is good to be informed but if you have to dig through that much garbage to get something good, is it really good? We're confused like Adam and Eve. They weren't in trouble because they ate an apple. The Bible says they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and they thought they were like God. I know what's good. We always get in trouble when we try to do God's job. God said it was good. Joseph is such a great picture all the way across 49 chapters of Genesis. He echoes back what God said when he spoke the world into existence. It's good. I pray for you in Jesus' name. May God help you through this moment of your life and give you joy. Amen.